Welcome back to another episode of MotoGP Mac and today we're going to talk about the practice session that just happened for the German Grand Prix in the Saxon Ring. Now I am currently traveling so the video will be slightly different today. But before we get into it, here is how the practice session finished. Maverick Vinales topped it from Jorge Martin, Miguel Oliveira, Alex Marquez, Peco Bagnaia, Elie Bastanini, Franco Morbidelli, Pedro Acosta, Fabio Di Antonio, Brad Binder, Jack Miller, Raul Fernandez, Mark Marquez, Fabio Quadraro, Augusto Fernandez, Johan Zerko, Luca Marini, Taka Nakagami, Marco Bisecchi, Remy Gardner, Stefan Bradl, Joan Mir, and Aleix Spagro didn't actually take part in the second session. And what can I say about this? But it was an absolute crash fest. To count how many people went off, you definitely need both hands to keep track of it. But, you know, Marc Marquez had an absolutely massive crash through the waterfall. Enia Bastanini also. And um, Enia, you know, he seemed to be up and all right, similar to Marc Marquez. But Maverick did look really, really good. You know, he got 26 laps in. And there is a big gap to Jorge Martin behind him. Jorge Martin, again, looked very solid from the get-go today, so interesting to see how he's going to go over the course of the weekend. Really good uh, session for Miguel Oliveira, very much so, looked comfortable. Um, you know, got 31 laps in, um, so really good to see exactly that. Alex Marquez as well, good session from him. Peko Bagnaia didn't look all that comfortable and doesn't really. But then saying that, look, he didn't come out as strong as he did last weekend. But again, look, top five, not bad. Securely into Q2 tomorrow. So let's see what that will hold from. Elia Bastanini definitely is going to be sore tomorrow. Had a good, big, nice, juicy crash in through the waterfall. You know, it's really, really scary that that corner, you know, 120, 130 mile an hour and to lose the front the way they do. It is unbelievable. Uh, Morbidelli, again, look, a good session for him. You know, he is consistent um, just slightly behind any of a thousandth of a second. Pedro Acosta, again, came quite late in the session, but again, into the top eight, straight through to Q2. Fabio Di Antonio had an egg beater of a crash also. I think it delayed the session, actually, because it punctured the air fence. But again, good um, good session for him. Uh, hopefully, he won't be too sore in the morning. The two KTMs, Brad Binder and Jack Miller, you know, only a thousandth of a second uh, between the two of those. So they're definitely on point for what they're getting the maximum out of their machines. Raul Fernandez in 12th, good session as well for him. Unlucky to be down there, but like realistically from 7th to 10th or to 12th or 13th place, there is not a lot in it at all. Marc Marquez uh, did have that haymaker of it off in the waterfall, did come out again and do a couple of laps in new letters, etc. But he retired about 30 minutes to go in the session. I think he was called to a medical check. He has been declared fit uh, to race for the rest of the weekend. But I do think it is pretty weird that they called him in. Maybe they saw that he maybe banged his head during the crash or something and they wanted to do it. But he was called and stopped. He did get one fast lap in, but he will go from Q1 tomorrow. Fabio Quadraro as well, close enough to Mar Marquez. Um, you know, didn't really see too much of him during the session, but again, he is the top Japanese bike. Augusto Fernandez, I will call it that he's having yet a strong enough uh, session. Um, again, he is a good chunk behind uh, Pedro Costa, about half a second, which is a little closer to normal. Positive weekend. Hopefully he can go forward a small bit. Johan Zarco ended up as top Honda. Uh, and again, as I kind of predicted, Hondas were going to struggle. The real surprise for me, uh, realistically, was Marco Bisecchi down in 19th place. I do know, obviously, he had a crash in that, but definitely the this track is about front-end feeling and turning, and you can see he is definitely struggling. He is slower than a couple of uh, Hondas, um, 
and Remy Gardner, who is making his debut on the Yamaha M1, is like six tenths of a second behind him. Uh, Stefan Bradl and uh, Johan Mir again. Uh, what can you say about the Hondas? It is not. Uh, it's not great to see them where they are. Um, but again, look, it is what it is. Uh, Honda are in a in a pretty precarious pr- position right now, and they need to to get out of it. Alicia Spagro didn't uh, start the second session. I would think that the first session he was twelve seconds off. So. I think he said good night, Irene, on that. Overall, I thought it was really, really good session. A bit of a crash fest. You know, the bikes coming through the waterfall is something that you never get used to. I'm on the kind of the edge of my seat every time. But I would definitely love to know your thoughts. What did you think of the session? And who is your race winner in tomorrow's sprint? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.